have an amazing, amazing panel of beautiful mama entrepreneurs um, lined up for you all, and we're going to talk through what this really looks like, right? The day to day, it's cool to like pull in and say this is what I want to do, but the actual daily grind is a little bit different, right? And so um, today we're going to talk through that and what that kind of looks like. So we're going to start. Um, by introducing each other, actually, um, and talking about um, what this beautiful panel of entrepreneurs does um, and the things that they birthed and created. Um, so we're going to start with Linda. Oh, sorry, I didn't introduce myself. I'm, <laughs> my name is Angel Lobo. <laughs> Hello. Um, I work with Glenda and Gina um, on both of their projects that they work with, and also Allison. Um, I work with Community Responsive Education as well as Transformative Educators now, and I also work as an event manager with Gina at um, Make It Marco. It's exciting uh, work to do and supporting entrepreneurs is a really, really amazing position to be in, um, and I'm so grateful to be a PA. And I have two daughters. My daughters uh, are Phoenix and Rainbow. And this is them. <laughs> okay, so our first panelist is Glenda Makatangai, and she is um, the mother of Upper Cloud Media. She birthed this company. Um, she also does a ton of amazing things in education as well. Um, she has tons of projects that she works on. And the funny thing is when you ask her what she does, she's always just like, I don't know, everything, <laughs> all the time. Um, so she also does operations for transformative educators now, as well as community responsive education. Um, for anybody that does operations, you know that's everything, right? Everything. Um, she's an amazing, amazing mother of four beautiful children. Um, her oldest son, Giovanni. Um, and then she has two boys, Maui and Cruzi. And she also has a beautiful daughter that she co-parents with, and her name is Gianna. And all of these kids, if you ever meet them, are bright and spirited. And you can tell that she puts the love that she puts into her children into all of the work that she does as well. Um, this is Paloma. She's wonderful. Um, my mantra since having Giovanni is to never mother alone. And to know that you exist brings me a lot of peace and confidence in being a good mother. So thank you. Paloma is the founder of Papa Lowdown PR agency, and it's the best PR agency in San Francisco. Yeah. <laughs> and she mothers um, Tim Yas. And she co-parents with Claudine. Yeah. And then um, Alon, Kalayo, and Amihan. It's a lot. <laughs> and you're damn good at it. So good. co-birthed with Don Mabalwan, um, Journey for Justice, and that's coming out at the end of this month, October 27th at SOMA, uh, at SOMA, sorry. Um, Gail is also a mother to four children, um, oh my gosh, it's Ruby, Jude, and Luna and Lyra, twins. So something about me and Gail, we both have identical twins. <laughs> Mine are four, hers are one and a half, yeah. about. Yeah, so <laughs> we just look at each other sometimes like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome. Thank you, Paloma. Uh, this, of course, is Dr. Allison Pintianco Cubatas. And she has been an amazing, nurturing force and mother to many Penais. She's a professor at San Francisco State University. She co-birthed the poem with Dr. Don Carvalho. 
Resistance and Struggle are sisters. She also created the Ethnic Studies Program for San Francisco Unified School on curriculum and teaching the next generation of teachers, and she also first PEP SF. And, and oh my gosh, there's so much here. <laughs> and of course, the amazing, the amazing dancer, Mahalaya. And she's a star. She's an absolute star. If you guys have not seen her yet, you need to watch You this. will see her. <laughs> when you see her, you need to see her dance. And she brings so much of your emotions to the surface. And she, Allison Mother, all of that. And I have a very special memory of Allison. When I was in my early 20s, it's kind of like a big mouth. And, um, <laughs> I got myself into trouble by doing an art project, and I thought this person, this other Pinai, had this great name, and so I took this name and I slapped it right on my video, which is totally not cool, right? And it was gonna be a big, like, not cool community, like, fisticuff kind of thing. Um, and so, Allison came with Dawn, they're like, okay, 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 what did you just do? I was like, oh my god, the name was just like, it's fucking brilliant, dude, I'm like, damn, I'm sorry. Um, does any of you want to know? Penitration, that was the name. I know you read the article, but then 
Um, Gina said she didn't want the academic article, so you read the one with the, with the ethnography stuff. I can't do this without looking at the slides. Okay, I'm gonna do this quickly because this is a panel and they need they get to talk, right? <laughs> so, you know, I, I still, I had to understand this. We sat around at a table during a beautiful brunch with um, our, our planning organizers people, right? And um, they came up with uh, this idea. I mean, well, Gina came up with a term, entrepreneur, but as an academic, I couldn't stop like thinking about what that meant, right? And so entree, I thought just entrepreneur, right, which is business owner, right? But the word entree, not entree like food, but <laughs> sort of related, means to belong and to be among. And, and that's something that I learned by just kind of doing the research and trying to figure it out. So the actual French word that they probably stole from some indigenous com you know, country. Um, <laughs> oh no, I, it, it works, yeah. Um, yeah, you did this, girl, that's you, entree. Entree. <laughs> you made us all feel belong, like we belong and we among each other, right? And then just so we were clear, just kidding, it, one more click. It's not clicking. Okay. Can you clip me? Can you clip me? That was so funny joke, where are you? <laughs> okay, Pinai. We need to understand the concept of Pinai. So, um, Don Mabala did some research, and the word Pinai actually means Filipina in the United States. Um, it's cited at UC Berkeley in publication in 1920, so the term is actually not a Filipino term, it's a Filipino-American term that was born in the United States, and then brought back to the Philippines to then be used as Filipino woman. So that's something to consider, because when we say the word Pinai, it's rooted in the United States, it's rooted in our experience. And then, I realized that, you know, entrepreneur is this belonging of Pinai, so thank you for this. Thank I, you for making it legit. <laughs> <laughs> this is my grant, my, my thing. Will you sponsor us now? Pitch, right? Okay. And then, um, entrepreneurism, and this is something we kind of talked about at that table, Gina, this concept of entrepreneurism. So entre, you know, entre, is um, belonging in among, right? And then if we add Pinayism, which actually, just to summarize the article, um, I, I co-wrote an article with Giselle Sacramento here called uh, Pinayas Pedagogy, a little bit, a lot later actually, it was like 15 years later or so. Um, men means something different now than when, that, when you, the article that you read. It, it really aims to connect the global, local, and personal issues and stories of Pinay struggle, survival, sister, service, sisterhood, and strength to uplift us mentally, physically, politically, and spiritually. So this term Antra Pinayism is really about what just happened today. What ha I mean, we're at the end of the day, but what happened all day? This idea of uplifting each other, whether it be about our struggles, or our service, our work, you know, it was this, this whole idea. So it goes way beyond owning a business, right? It's about owning ourselves, holding business, and holding our community. And so entrepreneurism is really about that. And I'm so, so honored and blessed to have been part of this inaugural event. I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Now back to the panel. Please, entrepreneur is a mama. Okay. Um, and then back to Angel, who will then take us into a conversation about what does this all mean? For me, when I think of the entrepreneurism mama, I think of Dawn, and I think of the amount of mothering that she did. And it you know, really kind of pisses me off when people say she's childless. Because when I look at my child, I'm like, she, that's her mama. And so, I love y'all. I'm gonna put it back to Angel before I can't stop. <laughs> Cool. So, uh, if you're a mama, if you want to be a mama, if you mama people in different ways, which you all do, especially birthing your business, 
um, we're going to talk a little bit about how to bring wholeness and wellness into that work, right? As mamas of the community, mamas of our work, mamas of our children, right? Um, so what I'm going to pose to the panel is um, how do you define wholeness and wellness and how do you align that into your work? We'll start with Belinda. <laughs> So how I define wholeness. I define wholeness as telling the truth. I have gotten into the habit of telling the truth, the same truth, in different ways to different people, trying to make it really palpable for people that agree with it, understand it, accept it, celebrate it. And I got further and further and further away from my truth doing it. And so, being whole is really about being truthful and saying, telling the truth in the way that I need to tell it when I need to tell it. And really being able to listen to what my own needs are and making time and space to reflect on what my, those needs are and what that truth is. And so that's how I define wholeness. Tell the, tell the fucking truth. <laughs> Let them hear it. Um, how do you align that into your work? Um, with my work, it's actually really easy to feel whole. I think I've built a culture around um, honoring yourself, um, really developing your own personal passion. I do that alongside every single person I think that I meet or that I engage with. I put their, I ask them and I challenge them to put their truths you know, on the table, regardless of what my needs and agenda and what my business objectives and my goals are. I really, 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 really want to know what it is going to take for them to thrive as a human being. Um, so we continually open up that table of conversation and check-in, and it really isn't about the business at all. It's really about, like, what are your gifts and how can I support that in nurturing our community forward? Um, yep. Okay, so wholeness, um, I think I, I always knew I wanted to be a mother. Um, so I, prior, I, don't, I don't think I prioritized it over my business, but I definitely, I didn't wait to have children. So for me, wholeness is having a family and having a business. Um, that makes me whole. Because um, I get to, I get to be who I want to be, and I can take my kids to field trips and not have to answer to a boss. Um, I make my schedule. So it, in that sense, that provides me wellness because um, I'm in control of my time. Um, and so if I need to take a break, I can do that. Um, yeah. Wholeness. I, I'm a kind of a, the, the kind of person that has to compartmentalize everything because there's so many pieces that are fitting. I mean, the four kids are yelling and they're arguing with each other. Um, my partner is getting stressed out. <laughs> you know, um, I've got a deadline. Uh, I need to be the caregiver for my parents, so I gotta go somewhere here, or I need to stimulate everybody at this time, or they're all going to go mad. Like, so I need to compartmentalize everything. So I, I have my self needs, I have my family needs, then I have community needs, um, and then I have my professional needs that have nothing to do with any of it. And so I try to do a balancing act of trying to get those needs met and trying to really incorporate each part of myself and hit, you know, the needs when they're able to cross paths, um, they can. For instance, you know, if I'm going somewhere um, for the book, then I'm going to take my kids or the whole family comes along, so everyone's getting stimulated. Um, if I'm at a meeting and I need to nurse the twins and I'm sitting there and I'm not on video chat, I am talking with a earpiece, nursing and typing at the same time. Like this really just really cross 
multitasking, but I've compartmentalized it all. But when they can intersect, they will. And they do, most of the time. But it's really an act of, um, of really being able to breathe when I can and really calming everybody down around me. Like I've gotten this new thing where I have my partner and he's freaking out because it's kind of easy to do at my house because there's a bunch of crying. <laughs> I just go over there, put my hands on whoever's having a hard time, like my daughter or my son or the partner, just sit there and I just look at them and I breathe. And I don't say anything because talking doesn't do anything anymore. Like no one even cares if I say anything anymore in this house. Just sit there and I breathe and I look at them and I smile and they don't, they can say whatever they want I'm just breathing. Hold them again, and if they're still fuming, I we breathe more. But I don't say anything, and that's how it goes. And it has to be, because there's just so much. And then they smile and they laugh, and they're like, "Oh my God, you're ridiculous." But so it, there's a lot of intersection, but it's a lot of compartmentalizing and, and weeping, and making sure everyone is calm, and then running away from everybody when I need to, because that needs to happen, like really. <laughs> <laughs> I feel whole when I laugh. <laughs> um, so, caveat, I don't feel 100% whole. If that makes sense. I feel like I got a whole. Um, but I think whole to me is a set of goals. You know? like, um, I, I believe like that it's important for us, especially as nice, to become self-actualized whatever that means for ourselves. Um, and that's a very uh, individual process, but cannot be done individually. Um, and so I also believe in community and cultural perpetuity, that our goals are much larger than ourselves. Um, and without being connected to people, to our families, um, whoever we decide to call family, um, and then also our community, whatever we decide to call community, if we're not connected to that, then we won't feel whole. Um, but I, I am not sure that every single day of my life that I feel whole, if that makes sense. I feel like it's in progress. And then right when I feel like it feels whole, and something happens, you know, and I don't feel whole again, so it's, all, it's this process of becoming whole. Um, I feel like I'm philosophizing, sorry folks, if it's too much. Um, but I, I just feel like it, it's really important to not get so stuck on um, the concept of being whole or feeling completely balanced because right when you do, you become imbalanced and you don't know how to deal with it. But it's through every single struggle, as Don would say, every single struggle that you go through that you learn to become more whole. I, I should draw an equation, but it, if that diagram exists, someone give it to me. Okay, thank you. So on the flip side, um, what does it look like when you feel like your wellness and your work are not aligned or you are not well? What does that look like in your daily grind and also in your work? How is that reflected? And this is open to anybody. Okay, I'll come. Um, so I prioritize sleep. I know that's hard for all of us to do. <laughs> but um, when you become a parent, <laughs> when you don't have sleep, you turn into a scary mommy. <laughs> so I think that's how, like, that's what happens. Like, I'm really short-tempered. I probably say and do things that, you know, are not uh, good examples to my children. Uh, so, that's what I do, and also when my house is too messy, then that throws everything off, so I will just go and like clean everything and organize the toy closet, um, and then that helps me feel aligned again. So, yeah, I mean, that's a good way, like, uh, cleaning is therapeutic, or like, you know, it's, a, it's meditative, so um, I feel like when, I, yeah, when I'm not aligned, then I go to cleaning and organizing. <laughs>
I have anxiety disorder. So I get panic attacks. I don't know if anybody else gets them in the room. <laughs> but, um, so I know if I'm stressed, it heightens my panic attacks. I know I, I speak, I'm on the road, I, I'm on a speaking tour, oftentimes when I has got me on a speaking tour. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I'm not feeling, um, like if I'm not taking care of myself, you know, like I just, you know, like can't, um, I just start having panic attacks. But now I seek acupuncture. And, you know, like I carry like 20 crystals in my bag. <laughs> um, all kinds of stuff that I do specifically, sometimes it's just for me, just so I can stay calm. Um, and I listen to my child's heartbeat every day. Every day. Well, now she's, she's a cup. <laughs> she's like, not too close. <laughs> Sorry, that was way TMI. That's on video.
to have turned the clock on diabetes. And so if any of you are out there that have it or are in danger of having your sugars or your A1Cs um, high over you know three months, your average sugars are really high or you're like straddling the line, um, definitely check into it. There's some really scary side effects and um, I'm so glad that my friend told me to go do what I needed to do. And so when I think about wellness, like I need to be here. I need to have my eyes. I need to be able to hike. I need to be able to run after people. I need to be able to be here and be with the community and be with my family. And so I'm gonna do it. So if any of you are running away from your doctors in this room, go please get checked. Laugh about it all you want, but please find the time to check yourself out and fight for your health because no one else, including the medical um, offices that you're seeing or the doctors that you're seeing are going to fight as hard as you can. So please, you talk about wellness, you talk about still being here tomorrow. for sharing that was very open and very healing to hear that because I think a lot of folks right can uh, relate to the different stories that are being told and I think in this work especially when you work for yourself you lose sight of that wellness and wholeness because you're running towards these goals right but it's so 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 important I know a lot of this was talked about with self-care and especially if you have families that you're caring for as well right um, so we wanted to open up the floor to any questions that you wanted to ask our panelists Anybody got questions? Yeah, it can be about raising children and work, or it can be how you balance. Um, I'm, just, I'm curious, you know, if you're also facing um, dealing with aging parents, and if any of you are doing that, how does that? Because I think, you know, I see how it is from a Filipino community perspective, and then as a business owner. Talk a lot about your life with your family, so I'm curious about you know, parents or grandparents or life. Uh, a few years, maybe a couple years ago, we were kind of um, brainstorming. Uh, Allison's my cousin, <laughs> which has been like, uh, honestly, has been part of my survival. Um, but we, we or my brother, we have some nurses in our family, and my background's in social work. I know how to run a business, and so my commitment beyond this um, time in my life where I'm investing in my creative energy and building community is to um, become the caregivers of our parents and having that be how we support um, support their, their lives. Um, and so that's what we've kind of teamed up on um, as a way to take it upon ourselves to really love on them in the way that they deserve to be loved. And so that's been where my head and my heart has been at in, in that part of my life. Our grandmother's turning 100 next month. Wow. I, my parents take care of me. They're in their 80s, but I also am... If you see me at any event, you will see me with my parents next to me, and they will go to all kinds of like movie screenings. <laughs> You'll see them at Undiscovered, hanging out for like six hours straight. <laughs> you know, and they're there for me, but I also, I don't say I juggle because they just enrich my life, and I'm lucky that I have brothers and sisters, a brother and a sister that help me, but usually it's up to me to take them here because they can't really drive far and they need stimulation. Um, so I take them out and I stimulate them and they, of course they, they have the, the kids that um, stimulate them as well. But it's a, it's a juggling act. I've actually, I've incorporated them in the business too. They're my translators um, for the children's books. And so they've translated, which stimulates them, they translated their most recent one, that activity book, Beautiful Eyes activity book, so they translated that into Tagalog. Uh, but then I had another editor look over it, uh, a Tagalog editor to look over it, make sure that their arguments and what they ended up finalizing was correct because they're in their 80s. I don't know <laughs> how modern the Tagalog is that they're using, so I try to incorporate them. It's really, Kapwa, and I just learned Kapwa 
like the real meaning of it, maybe like last month or a couple months, but it's the idea of having a shared identity. It's like that tribal identity, a shared identity. So, so you are me, and uh, and I am you. And so I feel that way about my parents as I take care of them and as they age. They're absolutely part of it. In fact, we have like a book launch for Beautiful Eyes on November 24th at the San Francisco Public Library, um, the main library. And they're going to be there and they're going to be talking. Um, and at first, when I started doing this work with them, I was a little bit embarrassed because I was like, Kayla, isn't everyone going to be like, what are you doing working with your parents? Like, you know, that isn't, not professional, but it's not like high, like, you know what I mean? It's not like, what do you call it, legit? <laughs> like, you're still, like you're still connected to your parents? And so I wasn't sure what to do with them. I would have them at events or what that, and I feel a little bit like, oh my God, how do I, how do I figure this out, my, my professionalism and them being with me everywhere? And, and it's because of Kapwa, and now I absolutely understand why they're with me everywhere. I am them, and they are me. And they're with me everywhere, and they do the work with me. Um, they argue about translations in the book. In fact, in um, Journey for Justice, we needed handwriting. That was from the 20s and 30s of the letters that we put in the book about Larry Gitlian. And I was like, oh my god, you guys are from that era? So they're hand <laughs> or a counselor, a family counselor named Larry Lariosa, um, who used to work at UCSF, taught that to me a couple of months ago. Because now I understand, and I can have so much pride, it's really a tribal thing that I have with them now, um, that doesn't seem taxing or like, oh my god, they're with me again. So I can understand it on a Filipino tribal way than like an American kind of way where it's like, um, you're still with your parents? <laughs> you know, so that's, that's how I, they really were woven into my, to my professional life. Thank you. Any other questions? I think we have time for about one more. I saw a few hands. Hey, go ahead. Oh. So, And no one in this room is going to let you do this alone. Yes. And I've been a single mother.
mothered twice. <laughs> but I've never mothered alone. And you'll realize that as long as you are living and working from a place of your truth, you'll be surrounded by exactly what you need to enjoy this life and enjoy this journey. I've never had it easy, but I've always had it good. And it's because of every single P9 in this room. I've never been alone. And you're never gonna be alone. And when I, my, I'm struggling, because I do get pushed to the edge every single day. I have four children and a lot of lives to manage. A lot of expectations, a lot of teams, a lot, a lot of folks to like truly sustain, like I sustain, help sustain their livelihood. But when I struggle, I call it to Alison and I say, Gio's off the hook, you need to talk to him. <laughs> And I say, Nino, you haven't texted Gio, where are you at? And when any of my children are struggling with something, I say, call Lala, call Papa. That's what they're there for. And I, I do have this deep expectation that this is our collective responsibility to raise our children and raise our businesses and raise our own lives and well-being and our own soul to really become expansive because we have a lot of work to do and I don't do a single thing by myself like I even the send an email like Angel can you check this out real quick and make sure you got a second set of eyes on this for real for real for real for real and so I lean in and I know where my blind spots are, and I know that they exist, and I know that I'm never going to be enough, and that is a liberating feeling. I'm not striving to do it all. I'm not. I am fucking ambitious, and I want to have my hand in everything, but I know that I'll bring a team and a community alongside me. And that also fuels their purpose, as long as I'm a good and present listener. This is not my journey, my agenda, my goals. This is like our journey, our agenda, our goals. And then there's this deep investment there. And so this shit just moves. You barely gotta do anything and you're like, oh, I gotta talk to Gina. I gotta partner with Paloma. Oh, I need to hit up Claudine. And this shit just moves. And you find yourself in a whole new reality building capacity, you're still freaking tired, but you become limitless because you don't do it alone. And so you literally, you can email me <laughs> any given, I babysit for your future children. That's so me. I'll build a space so all of us bring our children and we do this work together. And that's not, that's exactly what is Real. Yeah, for real. She does do I agree. I was like, have another one, have another one, have another one. Yes, it's like very fulfilling for me. And there's a lot of us in the room that thrive off of that. And I see how everything can be fluid and intersect. And I know that it exists. It's not like this if I want this, then I have to compromise this. If I want that, I have to compromise that. You just work in partnership, and it really does happen. Got you. openness and listening and you can definitely talk to any of us one on one.